And still, Ohio State is bringing in an awful lot of talent in this upcoming recruiting class. Alan, tell me about one of the recent guys that they've brought in, a man named Imak Vimahi. Yeah, he was an important get for them, one of the few additions for them today, an extremely athletic but also tough offensive lineman from Hawaii, was originally going to announce his decision at the Polynesian Bowl, decided to wait, and it was after that that he took an official visit to Ohio State. Then Ryan Day came out to Hawaii and did an in-home with his parents and really sealed the deal there. So chalk this up as a recruiting win for Ryan Day and his staff. And there's a bunch of wins for Day in this group. Again, their numbers overall will be a little lower because the amount of guys they're bringing in is small but they still got the five stars Harrison Wilson and Miller still got an awful lot of four stars as well what does Ryan Day have to think about his first official completed signing day Katie with him is with him thanks Mike well coach it's officially been eight almost nine weeks that you have been you know holding down the reins here at Ohio State what's been the primary focus for you during this time it's mostly been recruiting I mean that that's been the the, the sprint here and recruiting, um, you know, just getting off the road this week and being able to do some mat drills this morning with the guys and workouts with the guys and uh, Coach Mick and um, the strength and conditioning staff has been with our team. But for the most part, it's been the focus has been all on recruiting. You've been a part of so many signing days in the past, but now this is your voice on the other line on the phone. How are you doing things different? Well, I mean, first off, you know, anytime you have a new staff, there's a different personality to it. But, um, you know, the, the culture that's been built here is better than, you know, anywhere else in the country. And, and the, the players that we have and, and the, um, the culture that we've built here is amazing. So I think when you can recruit a great player, great families and have great uh, academic, um, you know, footprint here, you know, I think that's really important. And we don't have to compromise at Ohio State. So that's what's been great about going through this recruiting process is, is recruiting great families, great students, and great players. When you take a look at this roster and this new class getting ready to come in here, how do you assess it right now? The 2019 class? Yeah, I mean, uh, first off, loyal. To, to, to kind of go through a coaching change and some of the things that have gone on uh, in the past few months, you know, uh, not only just with the head coaching change, but, you know, we've had some changes on the staff. These, these, pe these people have been loyal, and they're great families. And so, again, when, it, when you take a look at the type of kid that we're bringing in, these are great families. Um, they've stuck, stuck with us. And so that goes a long way. That builds the foundation for the future moving forward. Uh, but when you take that aside, when you look at the quality of guy that we're bringing in, it's amazing. And it isn't a huge class, and that's for a reason. You know, the reason with that is that you know, we've only had two people leave the program since August. And that's really amazing. And so, you know, uh, going into the second signing period, we're at 83. We only have two spots left. But if you look at the quality of guy that we're bringing in, and, uh, you know, I know sometimes the rankings are one way or the other, but the ranking of, of the kid per recruit is better than anyone else in the country. Okay, so you mentioned it is a smaller class, but it's not for lack of quality. Uh, and you've got six true freshmen already here in workouts on campus. What's been your early assessments of those guys? Uh, through the roof. I mean, those guys are just being interviewed out in the indoor and, and killed the interviews. I mean, you can tell what type of kid that we're bringing in. But again, when you look at how good these players are, from Zach Harrison to Garrett Wilson to Harry Miller, uh, off the charts, and then having the ability to bring in someone like Justin Fields uh, really helps with the class. And I know that doesn't show in the recruiting rankings, but it's helping our team. So those three names that you mentioned, I've heard as instant impact guys. We're going to see them in the fall. I mean, people in Columbus are excited. How realistic is that? Can these guys be that instant impact? I mean, anytime you're recruiting at Ohio State, you're bringing in high caliber players, and, and we want a lot of guys to play early, you know. Um, but that there's competition at every position, you know. And so um, there's been guys who are already in the program who are highly recruited who have been in the program. So um, there's always high competition at every position, and this is not any different. As you get ready to embark on your first full season as head coach of the Ohio State Buckeyes, what are you most looking forward to? What gets you excited about the fall? Working with this team. We had a match drill today at 6 a.m. That was better than that match drill I've ever been a part of. The energy that we had to start and then the energy we had at the end of the match drill. We have a great team and a great culture. And these kids are fun to be around. They have energy. They make you better. And they challenge you on a daily basis. So um, really working on this journey through uh, offseason, spring ball, preseason, and then through the season is going to be really fun. Enjoying the ride. Coach, appreciate the time. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mike, we'll send it back to you in Chicago.
Great stuff, Katie. Thanks again. Here's a look at Ohio State's class. Jerry's talked about it forever. This is a program that is national. They will recruit national, and they have. And by the way, when we made this template, you know, uh, we don't often have guys coming from Hawaii, uh, so we didn't include them nor Alaska. <laughs> but, uh, but they're bringing in someone from Hawaii, so just trust us there's another state on there that is uh, being missed right now. Uh, as always, there's uh, especially the top of this Ohio State class is just loaded with talent. But, Howard, you win the lottery. You get to talk about Zach Harrison first. He is a uh, man. <laughs> a man. He's a grown man. I mean, he's, the athleticism that he possesses is going to allow him to continue to, to play at a very high level. And I got to tell you, he's still a raw athlete. So now, all of a sudden, he's going to have a chance to be coached you know, by some elite players or coaches, and I think the sky is the limit for what this young man's going to be ultimately able to be able to do at Ohio State. Another in-state guy is Cade Stover, and I think if Zach Harrison wasn't in the class, you might be saying this guy is the <laughs> best athlete in the group. He played all over the field in high school, had 592 tackles in his high school career, rushed for 27 touchdowns, passed for four touchdowns, uh, caught nine touchdowns. He really did just about everything on the field. I think ultimately he's probably going to put his hand down and be a defensive end, but he could play outside linebacker as well. Just a jumbo kind of athlete um, who, who I think can play uh, more than one spot. And, and similar to Harrison, once they bulk him up and coach him, he's going to be a great player. This is getting boring. Another five-star. <laughs> uh, Garrett Wilson, uh, Ryan Day mentioned him to Katie in, in her interview. He's got all kinds of skill. I, I mean, he looks like the wide receivers that have played for Ohio State last year. You know, he's long, he's explosive, he can do things with the ball after it, he can fit into their offense. This is one of the best gets in the entire Big Ten Conference for Ohio State. Jameson Williams brings some serious speed to the table. 10-5-4 in the 100 meters. Broke one of Ezekiel Elliott's records in the state of Missouri for track. This plays from the state title game. Uh, he helped his team get deep into the playoffs this season. Not just a speed guy, though. He can go up and get the football. Is good after the catch. Uh, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Paris Campbell with that speed and ability to take short passes and go the distance from just about anywhere on the field. Might get his hands on some punts and kicks as well, but had several defensive backs who tried to cover him in camp tell me he eats up cushions like no other receiver they've covered. <laughs> and that's impressive, but you got to have some guys that are going to be able to block for him. And Harry Miller is that type of a guy. Uh, you see just how nasty he is getting up the field. 6'4", 305. Really looks like he's ready to play right now. That's always tough as, a, as an incoming freshman, but he possesses all the skill sets, I believe. He says you see him going up to the next level, understanding how to dominate and finish. And this is what you want to see out of young offensive linemen. You see them just dominating uh, the defenders that are out there. He'll have to continue, as always, as far as being a pass protector. That'll be a part of his game that he'll continue to evolve and get better at. But Mickey, they are going to spend some time with Mickey Marotti. These guys mm. look ready to play right now. Just wait till Mickey gets an opportunity to work with him. And, and him in particular, he's so big, you saw his size. So that's a guy who does mission work in Nicaragua every summer. The natives call him King Kong <laughs> because of how big he is compared to all of them. So Ohio State bringing in an awful lot of talent.